Hey Facebook, this is Cindy Daychuk of Queen Bee Creations coming to you for day three of this big Jacobian cabinet makeover. Up until now, we have been layering paint colors. Today's not going to be the exception, but this is kind of one of our final overall paint colors. I had said at the beginning that this was going to be from a distance more of a gray toned cabinet. Um, and that's the wash that we're going to be applying today. We're not applying a solid paint color over top of this. And if you've been following along, we have put down a base of crinoline, which is kind of a cream color, a light creamy white. We have done a cross hatching with sandy blonde, which is a little bit more of a taupey yellow. We have done, um, Oh my goodness, what other colors? We've done some uh, pale green, which is apothecary. We've done some pale mauve, which is French millinery. And one other in there that a uh, little bit of, we didn't add faded burlap. Anyway, we've done four different colors on this so far. It kind of looks a little bit blotchy. I tried to post uh, on the website a little bit of uh, a close-up so you could see a little bit more of the colorings and how they've all kind of patched in together. So far I have added the gray wash to the rest of the cabinet except for the top and, and I'll tell you why. Little little tip. When you make up a color wash you're really guesstimating how much you're going to need. And in case you run short and you have to mix up some more and therefore getting an exact match is going to be near on impossible unless you measure. And I'm not a measuring kind of gal. Um, I usually leave the top for last so that if I have to mix up a little bit more and I'm guesstimating, it's on the top and it's not as noticeable. Now, obviously that only works if you're working on a big piece. <laughs> so people aren't looking at it the same way. They can't see the top the same way. If it was a, a you know, just a, a buffet or something, then you're obviously going to want to uh, have the same color on the, on the top, in which case then having it on the lower half of something and just kind of doing a wash back upward is going to help. What a color wash is, is just simply diluted paint. You're taking any color of paint that you're wanting to wash over the top, not unusual for people to use a white as a wash to give kind of this this kind of clouded softened look um, and really what you're looking for is determining what's the level of translucency that I want your color wash is going to be a little bit see-through otherwise you're just putting paint on so you don't want it to be fully opaque the degree of translucency is really determined by what is it that you're looking at wanting it to do? She thinks I'm talking to her. Um, so for this, from a distance, it's going to look a little bit more solid gray. You're probably going to see it as being a little bit more gray. As I'm applying it, I can see some of those soft rainbow hues popping through. Our next step is going to be distressing the piece. So we're going to be allowing more of those colors to come through but we want just that, that, that really light coverage, one that's gonna make the sanding just a heck of a lot easier, but it's also going to allow us to re reveal a little bit more of the colors uh, a little bit more often, a little bit more overall the piece rather than just in strategic areas. So what I did do was I took this gray color. I, I mentioned yesterday that I didn't have the the lighter gray that I needed and not the DIY paint. And on this piece, I've been using all of DIY paint by Debbie's Design Diary, which is a clay-based paint. It's no VOCs, no odor. It just smells a little bit like clay, <laughs> which makes sense. Um, but uh, for me, I tend to go with, one, with, with these kinds of paints that uh, have, have the no VOCs one, because then I feel more confident and comfortable with what um, my pieces are going to be doing in other people's homes, but also because I don't want the smell in my home. 
as I'm painting it. I, I tend to have things that trigger migraines, um, really strong odors like you, you'd get from certain paint products and things could be one of them. So for me, health wise, I like to go with these paints and um, this, this paint is awesome. So this particular color, letterpress gray, was a little bit too dark, in which case, you know, you can, you can kind of see, this is the letterpress gray that I started with. I added a little bit of beadboard, which is one of the whites. It's a softer white, not a bright white, and lightened it up. This is my wash, and then added a lot of water to it. So the amount of water is really gonna depend, is, is really gonna determine the degree of translucency. That, that you've got. A couple of other tricks about color washes, a couple of things to watch for. I am not at this stage looking to reactivate this paint. When it gets wet, so meaning if I sprayed water at it or when I would add my color wash, if I worked it too much, I would reactivate this paint and now my color wash is blending in with these colors. So I'm not looking at muddying these colors up. I want when I sand for them to still stay a little bit true, which means I'm not going to be overworking the piece. And it may look that way to you, but bear in mind, it, it all has a lot to do with the, with the degree of pressure. So I'm gonna be running my brush pretty lightly over the piece so that I'm not damaging the coating and the layering of the paint that I have underneath it, right? I'm also going to be taking, and I'm just using a chip, an old chip brush for this, right? I buy these by the case off of Amazon and um, work my way through them slowly and throw them out when they get a little too ratty. But quite honestly, when they get a little bit, a little bit ratty, I often will cut the top bristles off, use it short with a lot of the waxes where I want to get it down into the grooves because that's going to destroy whatever brush I have. And these ones, for a buck fifty each, I can just toss if I need to. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of the letterpress gray in its full strength, straight from the can, into some of the crevices, into a little bit of the details, and I am going to be blending that a little bit. So you might see me spray mist it. This is a little misting bottle. It just has plain water in it. When I'm using it, I am just lightly misting. It does not have water that's dripping. It's not enough water that's going to sink right down into the paint. It's just enough to help move that thicker paint over, over top of and into the wash, right? So I'm going to be trying to blend it a little bit. Might be difficult for you to see from, from where you are, but what I'm, I'm already doing is starting to add a little bit of a shadowing layered effect. I'm going to be doing a lot of that with the waxing, which will come after all of the sanding, but um, when we get to the waxing, I'll be doing a number of different waxes as well. So I know on this piece, definitely clear uh, as a base, probably some, some dark or black wax, probably dark wax. And um, I, I, I'm thinking right now I'm gonna make a, a gray wax. So I'm gonna be taking some white wax and mixing some of the letterpress gray paint that I'm gonna be adding on in, in uh, a little judiciously today, but I'm gonna be adding a little bit of that in too. So we will be doing that, and then we will be, after all of the waxing and, and some of the buffing, then I will also be doing some additional aging with some, some additional products, some dusts and some uh, dark and decrepit, uh, so I, there's, there's a lot that's still gonna be going on to be able to bring out a lot of the beautiful details on this piece. And um, as much as I'm only kind of showing you the bottom half of this for these lives, I will be um, showing you some of the top as we get into some of the detailing. So, oh, I see, uh, hi Elizabeth, hi Holly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let's get started on doing some of the washing so that you see a little bit of this. You can see how thin this is. You can see this just running off of my paintbrush. That's what you want. And again, do a test patch and see if it's, again, the level of translucency. Some of my washes, I want to see everything below. So they're going to be even thinner than this. 
you know, it's going to be just as runny, but there's going to be a lot less paint in it. This is a combination of that letterpress gray and beadboard, but heavily diluted to be able to get um, the, the wash that I'm looking for. And here I am looking to pretty much cover the piece in these in this color, but I don't want to be spending a lot of time. And here I'm just covering it very lightly to be able to get that coverage. I'm going to be sanding back so that's not an issue for this, but it does mean I don't want to be working that paint below it too much. Don't want to be overworking it, certainly. And if I if I have it so that some of those, those under colors are showing through, that's okay. So I don't have to get 100% coverage with this because I know I'm going to be distressing back and sanding back to reveal those colors anyway. So unlike some paint finishes where I want to hide everything and just show very strategically in some of the distressing um, areas where the paint color is, so maybe like some black in the corners or some natural wood, this I'm going to be distressing all over. I want to get some of these lower colors, these under colors showing through and creating this this slight, just soft kind of rainbow effect. Overall, it will look gray, but um, it adds a little bit more depth to the color, a little bit more tonality. And I think that when people are starting off painting furniture, and I know I get a lot of questions. I had somebody asking me some questions about, just recently about, the colors that I had used on refinishing, if you scroll back, there's an, an, another old vintage cabinet that I had done recently, kind of in gray tones. It looks a little bit more blue and cream um, on, on uh, the pictures, but it's, it's kind of blue tone gray, so it's a little bit more gray and cream. But the color that I started with underneath was olive. I used an olive green underneath those grays. Now, when I distressed it very lightly, you get a little bit of that green showing through, but nothing that probably anybody who didn't know would ever say, oh, there's an olive green under there. But what it does do is it adds a depth of color to the grays that I layer over top. So it's not so much I was looking for the olive to show as I was looking for it to, to lend a little bit more depth and a little bit more earthiness to the gray tones that I was going to be adding over top of it. So sometimes, you know, you can... Uh, if you're painting, let's say, like a, a red piece, if you have, if you layer that over top of the black, it's going to add this, this kind of this, this uh, element to the red that even if you don't distress back is going to give a little bit more richness and a little bit more depth to it. So there's a lot that you can do with playing with colors that a lot of people might not realize. You know, that you get a lot of people that they'll paint a gray piece gray. Most of, most of my pieces, even if they look gray, are going to have a lot of colors layered underneath it, which means it's very difficult one, for, for other people to duplicate. But it just, it, it, it lends a little bit more interest to the piece, a little bit more depth to the piece, and I think is one of the reasons why people would maybe be interested in buying that piece than just going out and buying a can of gray paint and painting painting their own buffet is that uh, there's a little bit there's a little bit more to it it's a little bit more involved there's a little bit more depth and there's a little bit more interest to the piece than just uh, that plain straight coating now I'm just trying to get into a couple of those little grooves down there because didn't necessarily hit all of them, but you can see that I'm just dragging that brush very lightly over all of those, those crevices, all of those interest points. I'm not trying to spend too much time in any one area. I don't want to start mixing this gray paint up with those other colors. I just want it laying lightly over the top so that when I do start to sand, I'm going to get a lot of those other colors revealed underneath it. 
Okay, so it's going to be more colorful than it seems, although it looks like we're going to a plain gray piece right now. <laughs> it's just looking a little more solid from, from your end, but we're just, we're just creating more layers, more depth, more interest. And again, just continuing to, to add to it. None of this has been hard to do, time consuming perhaps. And that's one of the, the things that I think sometimes when people are, are buying um, painted furniture from, from a furniture artist is understanding what they're paying for sometimes, right? Is, is understanding the pricing of the piece and what they're paying for. But you look at what were the number of hours that were spent on refinishing a piece and you know, what do you make per hour? You have to recognize that an artist, whether it's, it's a painting that you're buying or a piece of furniture perhaps, that they too are investing their time in the refinishing of that piece. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for all of the hours that went into them learning that technique. You know, somebody's got to pay for, for all of those hours of uh, learning and experimentation. You don't pay for all of them, but there's a portion of that that goes into the price. Um, and if you're a furniture artist, you need to make sure that you're building that into your hourly rate. But I know when it comes to pricing my pieces, I am very um, religious about tracking. This was that fine, fine mist, right? If I touch it, it doesn't even really feel wet, but the brush will know. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty religious about tracking the number of hours. That other uh, antique cabinet that I mentioned that's on the uh, site right now, you can scroll through or at any time you can check www.queenbeecreations1.com, which is the website that always has the most up-to-date list, up list of um, what pieces are available, their sizing, their pricing, all of that. So if you ever are wondering if something is still available, you can check there. Might save you scrolling down through pages and pages of Facebook, perhaps. Um, but it took me 17, 17 hours to finish that. Because some of it on the detailing, which I'm likely to get into with this piece, involves having to um, take just a small little artist brush to a lot of the detail, a lot of the crevices that are here. You know, when we look at these, these grapes that are up there, I'm, I'm gonna want to get down in between the grapes with some of my, my aging. I don't want it on top and uh, I, can, I can do some where I could just wipe back, but it also depends upon the look that I'm after. If I want it to look that heavy or if I want it to look a little bit lighter, I might have to do it a little bit more by hand rather than just letting my, uh, my brush drop tons into it. So sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit more delicate where I, I don't want it to have a really heavy look. And so I have to soften the approach that I use. It varies. Now, I will say um, when I started this cabinet and doing the wash, this container was full. I am down to a little bit less than the last quarter. So just to give you an idea of a little bit of the, the volume of wash that you might need, I'm using my uh, spray bottle a little bit more here only because I'm trying to extend how far this wash is going to go. I'm trying to uh, see if I can make it last through the whole piece keeping in mind that I have the top to do. So if I have to mix up a little bit more for that, I will. But if I don't have to, that's a bonus, right? That just saves me a little bit. And it's not to say I'm a totally lazy painter, but 
it back up over there too. So I'm moving fairly quickly on this only because I'm trying to use that light touch. I want that paint to kind of glide over the top. I don't want to be reactivating those layers. I'm looking for kind of overall coverage, right? but you're still going to see spots and areas where some of those colors peek through. Definitely the French millinery, um, which is a little bit of the darkest color that in the apothecary perhaps. Um, but the sandy blonde adds a little bit of warmth to some of this. It's kind of that, got that earthy warmth as well. So the sanding will bring some of that back but it also kind of blends some of this a bit. And I can highlight some of it or tone it down with some of the waxing when I get into that as well, depending upon what shade I'm using in what area. Okay, you go back over there. So let's just get this area. Now here, even though I'm trying to get into all of those little details and crevices, I'm still trying to keep it fairly light. Oh, hi, Holly and Elizabeth. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully getting a couple of little tips. For me, it's always cool just to see where a piece starts and where it perhaps ends up, right? So this piece I know I had posted on Facebook and just asking people to think about, okay, you know, what would you do? What, what would be your vision for this? Because sometimes that's the cool piece too, is to take a look at, ah, what would you envision? Would you go light? Would you go dark? Would you go um, a color? If so, what color? And then which direction did the artist take? How did that match with your vision for it? Did it end up uh, better? Did it end up worse? You know, are you still sold on, on your idea or do you end up loving what they did? So I have to admit that uh, when I get a chance, I try and catch on, uh, on YouTube or on Facebook a lot of different artists that I follow as well, just so that one, I can kind of see where they're taking a piece versus, versus myself, their creativity, their vision. How does that match? Sometimes I get ideas where I'm kind of like, okay, I want to try that. I want to see where that goes and uh, take it in my own direction. Now this, this is a French tip brush from Paint Pixie. And I'm just adding in some elements of that darker, full strength letterpress gray. And for this, I will wet it slightly and just take that same chip brush that I was applying the wash and just kind of drag it through lightly to just kind of extend it out, um, blend it in just a little bit more. But I'm just kind of strategically adding a little bit more depth, a little bit more dimension into some of those areas, just using some of the color. I'm going to do some of that with the wax, but it doesn't hurt to use your paint to be able to add some of that too right? Anytime that you can take a piece and just start layering, layering, making up words here, but you can just start layering some, some paint color into it, even when it's tone on tone like this is, right? It might seem very subtle, but it adds a little bit more dimension to the piece. Oh, Sorry, I'm, I'm nudging my dog out of the way here. She uh, tends to set up camp wherever I am and likes to be likes, likes to be touching me. Any of you guys have 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 uh, dogs or cats that uh, just you can tell what room I'm in at any time because my dog is right there with me. And 
forgive my workout clothes. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep them clean. I didn't get a chance to uh, kind of just jumped right on here rather than, than changing. But since I had a chance to fit in a, a little workout, I did. Later, after after we're done here, I have to uh, change into my into my whites, into my my dough buck. I'm heading out this evening to the dojang, which is for taekwondo. Our uniforms for taekwondo. Our uniforms are called dough bucks. And uh, the workout area, the training room is called the Dojang. I'm going to be helping with a, a Taekwondo grading. So we've got a number of, of kids that are going to be grading for their next belt level, which is always so much fun, right? To see, to see them working hard and progressing and the pride that they've got in uh, getting their next belt level which is, which is very cool. But uh, I will be helping out with that a little bit today. So there's no way I'm painting in those whites. <laughs> it's hard enough. I mean, usually I'm just in my, in my, uh, in my jeans because, you know, some people can paint in really nice clothes and they stay really clean. I mean, I'm already covered. My hands are covered in paint already. And, uh, and I thought I was being pretty, pretty, pretty neat and clean about this. So I have clothes that uh, I used to have just designated paint clothes, right? It's just these are the jeans I paint in. I don't paint in anything else. Let me just, you know, this is my paint top. And then I catch myself running out to the store and, and I'm in those clothes. And I'm just, so by the time that I started to realize that, you know what? I just ended up jumping on painting in, in whatever. And, oh, I just had this one quick moment and I just have this little bit that I want to paint. It'll be okay. And then I end up covered in paint. It's just, it got to be too, too much work to try and just maintain one set of clothes that I painted in all of the time. But I tend not to paint in my workout clothes just so that I don't look like a total Yahoo. <laughs> When, when I'm out in them or out in the gym, it's bad enough. Somebody my age wearing, wearing spandex, <laughs> maybe not, not the most fun thing for other people to see. Um, let alone if they're, they're looking at me funny because I'm also covered in, covered in paint and they're wondering what the heck I was doing or what exploded on me when I was working out. But sometimes I'm just too lazy to change. This, this was one of those moments where I was just, okay, I've been in clothes, I've been in my workout gear, i got to put my dough buck on later. I'm done. The next thing I want to put on are my jammies. So it's like, I, I don't want to be changing again. Anybody else paint and they find that they're holding on to like three, four, or five things? This is, this is hard, talking and painting, because usually I'm painting doing this and then taking the other brush. So I have to keep remembering that I have to keep my mouth <laughs> empty. So y'all can hear me as I'm talking because normally I'd be putting other little brushes in there and uh, it's not gonna work so well on a Facebook Live. So now I'm, I'm learning as I go to do it and then I'm catching myself just how often I do that, which is probably not a good thing, but I'm sure that we, we all do do weird things when people aren't watching us. So I'm, I, I can't believe that I'm alone in that. Am I alone in that? Hey, Stacy, how are you? I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, no, see, look, I'm, I'm covered in paint. I've got paint down there. All right, these were, these were new. I'm probably kneeling in paint too. So probably have it all over my knees. I can wash it out right now. So it will be okay after the live. I'll I'll get that done. So I know what I'm doing right now with adding a little bit of this darker gray. 
doesn't necessarily show for you guys, but it does give me a little bit more uh, depth in just a few of those strategic spots in a few of those corners, which I'm going to be able to use when it comes to waxing. The waxing will bring it out more and play it up. Probably those will be similar areas that I'll do some of the dark waxing, which will bring out those details more. So again, what we were doing today was simply adding that gray wash over top. I said at the beginning that overall it would end up looking gray and it looks like I've hidden those layers, but the next step is really going to be revealing those layers. It's going to be the sanding back, which, you know, my family loves when I'm sanding in the middle of the living room because dust, dust everywhere. Um, but it'll be, it'll be awesome in terms of bringing out some of those colors, some of the details, the wax will pull that out more and then we'll get into the aging. So I'm hoping, ah, great Elizabeth, first time. Well, you know what, honey, this is only my third time. So, I mean, the, earlier this week was my first time and I couldn't even figure out how to shut it off. So <laughs> if you watch that one, you've got the waving finger at the end. It was mostly because the stop button was not where the start button was. And uh, it took me a little bit because, you know, I'm older, technology. Um, and figure out where that was. So nice oversharing, but uh, this is something that I'm looking at doing uh, more, more often and kind of sharing. I've had so many people that have been asking about paint classes and especially local people here. And um, it's not something that I've done or offered. And I'm certainly not set up in my house for people to come here and uh, take a paint class for me. But I thought this was the easiest way to get that out. And I know with a lot of the antique pieces I've been doing lately and doing some aging, I've had a lot of other, um, you know, painters just starting up, wanting to know how to be able to get those finishes. So I thought that I'd share this piece at least from start to finish to give an idea of how I'm building that up, how I do some of the aging, how I, how I get some of those details to pop a little bit more. So hopefully you guys are learning something as we go along and you're enjoying. I am going to wrap up for today, let this dry because we're going to have to get into sanding and uh, I'm hoping to be able to do that tomorrow. I've got a couple of other appointments in the afternoon from my other job. So my crazy schedule, I I'm, I'm, can't say that I come on live at any kind of regular frequency. Um, but I'm coming on whenever I can. And certainly you can catch this in the replay. I have been posting them and uh, I am trying to get them up onto YouTube as well in case that tends to be somebody else's preference to be able to watch them there. So hopefully you stick with me. I'll see you guys soon. Definitely popping on again tomorrow and do a little bit of sanding with you. Take care. Be awesome.